today I want to talk to you about quantization and share a little plugin I've made to do sort of grid quantization on any set of geometry or point clouds. This is a clip of a sort of work in process I was doing a few months ago on a train to Glasgow and basically what I wanted to do and what I'll be showing you in this video is how I created something that basically subdivides a grid into every step of that grid having its own quantization. Now this is something I found kind of challenging to do in Touch Designer initially and had to apply some GLSL. This has got easier over time with the implementation and introduction of POPs. But for me, my starting point for this was obviously trying to create this in Touch Designer. I kind of thought naively enough that I could take a chunk of image, so basically a top based texture, and quantize that. Now quantization is really this process of reducing continuous values into a set of fixed steps. It's my little um, line there because I always forget how to talk technically. But what this actually looks like when we're working is if we look at something like a limit on this second tab here, we have a quantization value. So we can see here that I have this box that's a set of points. I'm turning it into a texture so I can process it with that limit. And then as I turn on this limit and move, we can see that I'm basically changing the grid step. So basically how many points are going to be positioned at each part of that grid. If I turn this into a chop, we can maybe see more clearly. So what's going to happen is we can see that as I turn up this ceiling, what we can see is that gradient between these steps is changing. And right here, it's nice and smooth. And as we move up, our grid step is basically getting bigger and bigger. And if we moved up to something like one, we can see that it's very, very few things actually going to be visualized because we are quantizing to such high values. Now, what this actually looks like in terms of code is kind of simple. So in GLSL land, if we were going to do something like this, and I'll show you my processing code in a second, but basically, um, the easiest way to do this programmatically is to create a sort of a quantize function. You take your input value, so this is whatever the value of that point is, this is the input here for that specific point, and then this is the step that you want to quantize to. And then you basically just run this little equation here, which is you take the floor of the value that's incoming, divide that by your step size, and then you multiply that by your step size. So then you get your quantized value. Let's take a look at that in GLSL land. So we have our little quantize function here. This is where we're reading that texture. The step is here, although I've actually switched this out to take a step from outside, which we can see in our M step here. And so basically the same thing is going on. If I scale that up, we are going to see different quantizations of that grid. Now this is fine, but what I wanted to do is something more like this, where I basically had a box incoming and every step of that grid is gonna have a different quantize value. There we go, if I press spacebar, I can change that up. And this is basically so I can put in point clouds because I like to work with point clouds and I can quantize those differently based on sort of a randomized quantized factor that's based on a randomized quantized factor that's going to be changed for each box. And this was something for whatever reason I found kind of hard to do in Touch Designer. My first solution was to basically write some code that took all my quantized points because as you could see there it was kind of slow in processing was to take all my quantized points and basically output them. It was very hacky and because I could work this out in code, I basically exported this to a CSV file or TSV file and then loaded this into Touch Designer. And it looked something like this. So basically I could load in my CSV files, which had information for the quantized XYZ points as well as the RGB um, 
and I also had this quantized value, which is basically just the quantized factor for each grid. Um, I used this to basically instance the size of each of those boxes. So this was my first sort of experiment here and what I could actually do is I could you can see I have a few files here it takes me a minute to load between them but basically I am running through CSVs Let's see and I have a few there which I'm sort of loading up I thought I had a, mute, a few more maybe one just saved out weird but you can see that it's kind of an interesting effect because you get this sort of grid-like pixelation, which I think is kind of super interesting. That kind of developed into me working with, this is more of a just top-based method where I essentially made an instancing section here. And so I just instance lots of geos and sort of mashed up their grids in weird ways. And you get these kind of like grid-like things, a bit more simplistic, but Essentially, something like this was more akin to what I was trying to do. And so this was where I basically took that code and rather than running it in something like processing and running the file in, I actually just processed it using a script chop and then output to a script. This, however, is quite slow. So if I run this, we can see that my frame rate tanks, nothing happens, and then we get a new grid. But it's not sort of super responsive. Once it's up and running, that's all fine, but the processing is kind of taking a while. And what was important to me was having something I could move between really, really fast. What I'm going to show you today is a sort of plug and play component that's going to make this much, much easier to do this sort of grid based quantization. I'm going to open that up and this is going to be available on my Patreon for folks that are interested in using this. Basically what's going on inside is we've got a few kind of input things, a little bit of GLSL in terms of GLSL pop, and then we're just going to output that processed information as pop data. It needs an input. For now, I'm just going to use this point generator. I'm going to plug that in and bring out to a null so we can see what we're doing. I'll also split the screen, pull this into a geo, and then do Alt 3 so we can view whatever is in the geo. There we go. So we can view whatever is in the geo. What I'm going to do is I'm going to up the number of points in this sphere to whatever that is, 10,000. And then I'm also going to maneuver this quantized seed. What we can see is right now it's pretty much applying to everything. And so I'm gonna bring up the scale on this radius to just something that's over one. So let's pop that up to two. And so now we can see kind of clearly that we have these sections that are quantized differently of that shape, which is already kind of a cool effect. What I can also do is I can change how many of these sort of subdivisions I have. And sometimes that can be a bit dependent on how big the shape is. So let's bring it up even bigger. And we can also change this map low to high. So map low to high, basically, the higher the number, the bigger the quantize factor. And obviously, this can be a bit related to scale. So if I put this to 30 by 30, zoom out so we can see it, then I could afford to go much bigger with that. So it's kind of up to you how, um, how you scale that. But now we have this object that's kind of quantized quite interestingly. And as we bring it down lower, we get these sort of just bigger chunks. And this can essentially work on any form of geometry, which I think is really cool. For example, if I bring in a sphere and plug that in, especially if I turn up that uniform scale a little bit, what we can see is that quantized factor is applying 
over the sphere. Put that back to one. And if I bring up that sphere's frequency, we can see slightly better how that is applying itself. So you essentially can get these sections that are more or less quantized and, and you can play around with things like this map low to high. So you can have sections that are particularly quantized versus unquantized. We can also use this for things like just a grid. And if I turn this grid up to something like 100 by 100, we could do a few slices here, but we don't have to. It's actually more interesting if we just have it as a one dimensional plane, uniform scale up. And then we can see that we have these chunks of quantized material. And again, we can move that scale up. Something that we can do that I think is a really nice effect is so basically every time I change this seed, we get a different sort of grid based composition. And so whatever material we're working on, what we can do is we can create a little feedback loop. And this essentially is going to slide between two quantized sets. So I'm going to do feedback. I'm going to do a math mix. And I'm going to do a null. Into that math mix, I'm going to plug in the quantize. So I'm going to have my fedback signal and my original quantize signal plugged in. I'm going to set my operation to mix ABC. I'll do P in 1P and 0.5 as my mix between. So I'll drag this null to feedback. So now when I choose a new seed, it should slide between. If I added in a keyboard in and a counter, plug this in to my seed. So every time I hit that key, it's going to increment. And I can also then change how much this is feeding back. So the lower the value, the longer it's going to take to feedback between those two, which I think is super interesting, especially if you tried to sort of place a texture onto this. You can get some interesting effects. And again, as always, it's like this tweaking of these elements. That's better for doing it from the front. It can be an interesting way of thinking about manipulating 2D geometry as well as 3D. In terms of point clouds, I'm going to bring in a point cloud, a PLY file, and using the PLY pop, I'm going to remove these normal fields. I'm going to remove the color fields and replace with red, green, and blue. And now we can see the outline of that point cloud. However, we need to rearrange this. So under the Rearrange tab, I'll go to Scope, and I'll select Color. The map from low to high is going to be 0 to 255. This is the initial range of our color values coming in, and it's going to map it to 0 to 1, which is the range that Touch Designer is looking for. So we can see that we now have our colors. And I'll just plug that in to my it's going to look super weird because it's textured with that fong right now. So let's just delete that. And also, good idea to pulse this feedback 
There we go. Home that. Let's add in a point sprite so we can make all our points a little bit bigger and see them more clearly. And so now we can see that we have this sort of effect that I was showing you earlier, where everything is quantized a little bit differently. And if I press that one key, we're going to move through that. I'll actually just take off this so we can see the slide. And now we're sliding between these different quantize amounts, which is, again, a super nice effect. We can limit this, which I think is a nice idea for these types of systems. And I'm just going to clamp between like three and three. Again, important to home that. In this case, what I would do is I probably turn down that range so that we have something that is more usable in terms of actually visualizing what we have in our scene. This is the problem with working with geometry. I always move to one viewpoint. This is sort of the internal of the quantization. And I think it's sort of a super cool effect. If you want to play with the scale of the blocks, what you would do is we'll instance a bunch of cubes. So let's do a box. We'll plug that in. I'm going to turn down the uniform scale to 0 0.01. In the geo, I'll turn on instance. And I'm going to drag in this null once instancing is turned on. So my translate will be P0, P2. Give that a second to load. And then under my scale, we'll use Q amount And that might be a bit small, so we could also go in and use a math to control that Q amount. So there you go. We can see what you could do here is you could go into this map section. And so, for example, we know that our low is 0 and our high is 0 0.5. So let's take that and put that into our high. And then we can have a bit more control here. So we could say 2, 0 or 0, 2. And then we can sort of control a little bit more how big these boxes are and you get like an interesting sort of checkerboard effect through that. The scale should change with that feedback. And then finally, we want to add in the color. So again, we'll use that null and we'll do color zero, color one, and color two. And there we should have the color attribute fed through as well. So obviously this is something you can experiment with. You can get the cubes a bit more sort of accurately uh, mapped than this, but this is sort of a good baseline that you can play with. And again, this is an effect I really like. So this is the component. I'm going to make this available on my Patreon under the component tier. And I hope you enjoy playing with it. Feel free to share anything that's super cool that you make and any improvements that you'd like to see, let me know and I'll try and make those updates. Thanks for watching and I'll be posting more tutorials soon.